Okay. We will record how really the user is using the, the simulation for accounting, economics, finance, and eventually later on we'll do another video on, on option trading. Okay, how does it work? A user come to Academy City, logs in, and after he logs in, he chooses a simulation. Let's open up the main screen. They can choose the company. I'm gonna use a uh, Anthem, okay? And Anthem, after I choose the company, it's automatically downloaded the data from our website and uh, automatically download the balance sheet, income statement, does the vertical analysis. And we don't have data for 2014 for some reason for that year. We need to check it out. But let's let that one alone and we'll look into it later on. We have a, a horizontal analysis and then we have ratio analysis, okay? Uh, uh, at the same time, we have some schedules that automatically built based on the data, uh, cost of death. In this one, the calculation come to be 2.12 percentage. Depends really on the industry the company is operating in. Uh, the countries and all of that stuff. Same cost of equity. We have estimate of return on invested capital based on the several years, the last five years. Uh, you can really change it if you think for some reason uh, it should be different. By the way, by the way, we really should look into why this one is a negative taxes. Uh, that's some issues that we will need to go as we go along and we'll make a specialist on this field because it seems like here the taxes are recorded as a negative number, which makes sense. So we're getting return on investor capital 143 when it, well, well, it really should be a positive number. By the way, you can really go and do it on one year, two years or three years. All of that works really dynamically. It's really common if we have data and we do have data for five years, we should really look into that. It's really do look strange to me, by the way. And why, uh, I can guess why, this is probably wrong just because of the way that negative and positive, but that's a detail we will deal with uh, as we go along. Okay, effective tax rate, okay. Again, I think there is some error here, but we will take into a look into that later on. Risk premium, it's a whole topic. How do we estimate risk premium? But I won't dive into the economics finance at this point. Based on all those schedules, the corporate valuation is done. We get a valuation. Of course, it will be negative because the EBIT is negative. So this is really, this is a company that should be evaluated in a different method. Okay, because of negative EBIT, but that's for next version. In the meantime, we'll take another company. Okay, then we have our skip this one. Then we have a, the data, the annual data we're basing our analysis on. That's what we're downloading. The one in red, they are calculated. In another word, for example, if I have total current assets, 28 and we have data that we collect of those two, the completing one will be the red one. So if we know those two, we have the total, we take the total minus the other two, we'll get a completing number. So that's the way we do the, all the red ones. Moreover, if you look at the total assets, we have total assets here. And if we're missing some, uh, for example, we're missing total long-term liabilities. We basically take a total uh, assets minus, but no, so in this case, yeah, minus equity. We have the equity. Okay, it will give me total liabilities. From total liabilities is the, 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 the summation of the current liabilities plus long-term liabilities. So you subtract 
the total liabilities from it, you subtract total current liabilities, you get the total long-term liability. All those rules of accounting help us out to fill up the red ones, which are not reported in the uh, XBRN. And that's the way we're really filling up the data from here. Based on that one, we get also the quarterly data for every quarter. That's what we have for a regular user. And we also open for option trading, but that's later on, okay? Now, what is the other beautiful things that we will open later on? Uh, so in order to, see, to show what we're gonna open, but before that, you know what, before that, let me use another company, because this one, I think it has some losses. Let's get Humana, I think it's in the same industry. I got to Humana, that's a different company. This company does have a profit, I think. If you go into the income statement, yeah, they do. Net income is positive, earning per share, uh, earning operating income, earning before interest and taxes is positive. If I go into the schedules, you see everything is positive. Everything is good, effective taxes, fine. Everything is calculated fine. That one is a really special one. We'll have to take a look at it and fix it. The valuation, we have the whole valuation, perfect. This is really good. Okay, here we have simulation, which give me a range of the prices based on 100,000 100, simulations. And this is really, to understand the whole things, you really need to take the corporate valuation class, okay? One thing is really also, before this class, you need to really take a class in financial statement analysis. In here, we talk about the balance sheets, income statement, vertical analysis, horizontal analysis, and then we talk about ratio analysis, okay? And then you take the course on corporate valuation. It's a whole course with all the module, all the schedules that are coming, how you calculate each one of those and understand how that works and how it's related to the valuation itself. The data we collect from the SEC, we have, as I explained before, the red one are we completing based on accounting goals. And then we collect also the quarterly data uh, with the same text. Okay, that's what, what we opened so far for the users. What we're gonna open in the future, in the near future even, I should say, that they're the same company here. Humana. But I will open it up as it is for programmers, option trader, and what we're going to open in the future. So I'm going to download Humana. And here we go. I get the data. And what the beauty about it, Humana belongs to a, an industry. And that industry has several companies, we can see, by the way, the industry this company belongs to, it's 6324. Uh, we have an, another screen here for option traders, uh, mostly on the 500 S&P, all the companies in S&P 500. If I click on SEC, and that will open and sort it by SEC, and I will just type here the, the, the S. I see code, I see all the companies in the same industry. Now, why is this important and what interesting? This is another feature we have, which we just opened recently. For now, we're putting it here, but we'll open it up in another place. When I click on the get data, it will pull the data for all those companies in the same industry. Those ones we already downloaded, all the data are perfect as they are reported in the SEC. Now, how do you like, how can you organize it? You can organize it in many ways. That for that, you need to know pivot table. So we have another course in business intelligence. The objective of business intelligence is to teach you how to use pivot table, the logic of dimensions, measures, for example, uh, Time is definitely not a measure. So amount is a measure. 
The other one, all di dimensions, so accounts could be a good one for the rows. I can put the companies for now in the, I'll put them for now as a filter and I will put the time dimension as the column. So let's see what we get, okay? Here we go. We're getting a nice, beautiful report that really shows me for all the companies together, and that will be wrong, by the way. If I wanna see all the financial statement for a specific company, I just choose the company that I wanna see. Let's say I choose Humana and then apply. This is, by the way, oops, sorry, I didn't choose the right one. Let's go ahead. What did I do wrong? Let me see. Uh, oh, I think that they don't have data only for 2012. Let me double check. Yeah, that's really what's happening. Let's just choose another company. Let's choose, uh, let's choose uh, uh, United Health. And go, and here we go. They have data for all the years from 2012 up to 2020. 2020. You can scroll down and have all the data. By the way, Daniel, and then write to yourself, we don't, didn't apply here all the rules we applied when we collected the data here. So we have to write a functions that does this calculation. I will, we will go and work on it this week, okay? Because here it's in JavaScript. We don't want to do it in JavaScript. And here we want it to be on the server, ready to go, and not being calculated when we pull the data. Okay? So that's the way we want. If we want to look at another company, let's say, let's say Signal, we can pull it out here, and they have data only for three years. Okay? Depends on how many years the company we have data on or whatever they reported uh, to the SEC, that's the data we have. Another way we can organize, and that's, that's a big topic we will talk about when we, when, we, when we take the course in business intelligence, you can take company and just put it, put it right here on the same columns. So and let's see what happened now, okay? And let me take the filtering away from the companies. I put all of them. Okay, and now I have all the companies. Now, this is really look really interesting, by the way. I have all the companies, and if I click on the company, you can see the data for that company. Click it back, I will close it, and then I can look at the data of every company in a different way. There's many ways you can really look at it. Another way you can play with it too, you can, uh, and that's what I said, this is something you really should take a class in business intelligence to know how you can change the data in the way you like. One thing you can do also, by the way, it's put the time on the filter, okay? This one, I have all the companies, but I can filter for a specific year. Let's say I wanna compare all the companies for 2012. So I just choose 2012 and here we go, we get the data for 2012. Okay, for the, the records that we actually have data for, okay? Uh, by the way, here we go, account payable, all of them you can see, that's the account uh, uh, payable, but more interesting data you can look at, it's uh, earning before interest in taxes, that's a very important number, or earning per share, okay? Earning per share of anthems, it's the highest here. You can tell the basic diluted, slightly lower, but it's still the highest. Earning before interest in taxes, it's a very, important number we many times like to look at earning i don't see it here for some reason uh, we need to see why maybe no, that's strange we should have let's look at the net income now here we go operating income i was looking at the wrong one operating income we need to check see daniel in the end of the day, a lot of those data are missing because we didn't apply the accounting completions. After we do the completions, all, a lot of the data will show up here. You get it? So all the red ones don't appear there. So that's why we don't see all of them. Second thing, and that's one thing that I told you, learn this component, 
is that I don't want it to be sorted alphabetically, okay? I want it to be sorted by the count number. If you don't find a solution, one thing that we can do when we're building up the count titles, we'll put the number just before it, and then we'll automatically we'll sort it by the number. Got it? And but yeah. it's very important to for to see the account number, by the way. For a lot of reasons, people accountants like to see that they even no numbers uh, account by the numbers, but a regular user don't really care about the account numbers. That's basically for the accounting, financial statement analysis, and corporate valuation. That's a sequence that we can start offering courses in it. And we have the whole platform, how to teach that courses with this platform. It's very special. I don't know how we can do advertising in Uganda. I think we should, even in the newspaper, even in the internet, even in the TV or radio, okay? I think it's something that there is, should be a huge demand in Uganda and East Africa. Okay, Daniel, I think this is really, I would call it first version. A different topic will be talking about this module, but that's for options. That will be totally different field, totally, totally different field in finance. Uh, how do you do trading? So this one, it's just strategy of butterfly. If I want to invest in butterfly, tells me the cost. And there's a lot of stuff going on with that. A straddle, and we're adding a lot of things. I'm going to open an iron condo. When should you invest in iron condo? And automatic uh, trading in options, OK? So that's uh, for now. This is, gives you some statistics on for example, if a company is, uh, yep, I didn't really want it, that one. Sorry, let me go back to this one. Uh, here we go, this one I wanted. This one gives you historical data on what happened in the day a company publishing financial statement analysis, financial statements. That have a big effect on the stock of that company. And you can utilize that when you trade options. So a lot of this is just a, a tip of the iceberg for uh, how you, you trade in options, but that's a different course, okay? And we have the whole things ready to go. Next week, Daniel, I will work with you. We'll do it in the afternoon. Let's do Monday afternoon after your class. Uh, uh, around, uh, I would say, about six o'clock our time, around between six to seven o'clock your time, I will take you through the programming of the options and so you can get going into it, okay? All right, let yeah. me stop now the recording just for a second because I want to leave this one as a one type of recording. I want to...